the um, um, discussion and prioritization of 2014 short and long term goals. Paige, you want to try to get us on track with that? You mind doing that? Um, Mr. Chairman, I think that you can pretty much track them out already. Um, the introduction um, for the goals states um, that each year during the budget process, the uh, staff really looks to the commission for what those goals are. You all, the policymakers, set the tone for the upcoming budget year and what your goals for our community actually are. Um, you determine um, the direction of the county government as well as our community with those. So without goals, it's very hard for us to make sure that we're meeting everyone's expectations with the budget. I think that um, everything is, um, is clear and fairly measurable at this point on the short-term goals that we have talked about so far, and even I think there's two or maybe three that are um, a combined ongoing process of long-term. And we kind of are plate-loaded as far as short-term goals go at this point. Is there anything else, though, long-term that you all would like to add to that? Um, and if so, how can we make those measurable? If you look at the, um, the goal worksheet, um, staff works during the budget process uh, to set SMART goals, and those are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. I think we've been specific on all the issues that you just brought out. Um, they have been um, <coughs> measurable in what we can do to accomplish. Um, certainly they're attainable and often being short-term, um, with the availability of funding, obviously they're relevant um, and time-based. Um, is there any, <clears throat> any other parameters that you all would like to set with what we've looked at so far? I think if, if I could, let me kind of set, a, set some direction to that. Rather than if we've got any other things that we want to add than what was already discussed, um, let's just do that on bring it up as subject matter rather than necessarily getting into the discussion because I think we'll find a lot of times you're not going to have adequate information. But if you have if you have something, a goal that you feel like that needs to be addressed, then let, that's where we'll put it here and then we can continue to work on that issue and knowing that that is one of your goals you'd like to get accomplished. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Marshall. Um, I, I had uh, just two of two other goals or things that uh, I'd like to uh, appropriate in view in the upcoming year. One, uh, that being the uh, fireman issue, we do realize we have limited uh, funds for firemen, as well as we have limited sources to uh, be able to fund active uh, full-time firemen. But we do realize we only got one fully serviced fire station in the entire county, I mean, on the corporate area. So, I mean, the county of our size, uh, you know, we need to be looking at possibly uh, one, according to the chief, uh, on the western part of the county, uh, something like that. So, uh, i just like to have, have those thoughts out there. Uh, the other thing is um, realizing that we um, haven't uh, talked about the uh, satisfaction of the, of the citizens with the uh, sanitation lately. Uh, I like to find out dirt, what it's like, perhaps by our next budget retreat or something like that, and if it need be, sit down with advance and, you know, just discuss the satisfaction level uh, that the citizens are having with it and just whatever areas might need to treat with it. That's all. Okay. Sure. That, okay, let's tell you about that fire thing that he just said. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I've talked with the fire chief about, you know, expanding our services. We have a couple of stations already that can house some. He mentioned Clyteville was one that, you know, relatively <coughs> recent, and the other one on Bemis. And um, the issue is going to be where do you come up with funds to hire somebody like that? But it's, to me, it, this is a goal that we really need to make a priority. In well, I would at definitely say that would be a long-term goal would be continuing, you know, looking at our, our uh, fire safety, um, our ISO ratings and those sort of right. things, so you definitely want to include that as long term. And in that, would we, and I'll talk to Joe about this, um, would this be a special tax district in order to be able to fund this? Uh, we want to consider that. Or if we don't, we're going to have shift funds around to be able to do it. And well, I know how tight we are on that. So, I mean, this is a dilemma, though, I think we need to address. 
Like I say, it is a long-term goal, not something yep, we can solve right. in six months, but it is something that we need to start actively working toward because, you know, when you have counties like um, Thomas County, for example, I have a brother-in-law that was with the fire department there for several years. They have a full-time county fire department. The city's got a full-time department, but the county's got four, uh, three full-time stations. And, uh, you know, we're twice the size of Thomas County. We've got one full-time <coughs> It will, save, it will save people on their homeowner's insurance if they get a better ISO rating. If we've got staff out there and equipment, we've done, a, I think, a, a relatively good job in putting new stations out there, like in Bemis and Clyteville and the one on uh, 84. <coughs> we just need to spread staff around more. Okay. Well, again, that, that, I think that we'll stop the discussion at that point, understanding that. It's a lot of history of Marshall term said on the problem of this discussion today. today. It's something we need to keep on our <coughs> on the forefront until we <coughs> I agree. Come That's a long term come goal. We always want to improve our public safety, so we'll move forward with that. I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. I would just want to, <laughs> to make a statement that I talked with you about that since all of us don't know where all of the fire departments are, don't know where they're located, and have never had the opportunity to visit, <coughs> I mentioned to the chairman that maybe we all of the stations and let the fire chief just talk with us about it so we'll know what the needs are and how we can pull this together. Looking at your goals and establishing those, it's very, very important for you to be able to establish what the measurable goals. And Paige, if you will take a second to give some examples of that because if you say, I want to improve our fire stations mm -hmm. or our fire service, you got to know exactly what that means. Are you wanting to drop your ISO rating by a particular number? Are you wanting to add uh, staff? If so, how many? Where? Those are specifics that you need to determine if these are going to be measurable. Can you go over that a second? Um, sure. Well, I mean, the, that's a great thing you just brought up with the, um, with the fire service. Um, would your priority be, as far as measuring that, to ultimately affect the ISO, or just to our paid staff? I mean, what would your what would your return on investment be? What do you want it to look like? If it would be asking? both. Yeah, if you if you can, I already talked to gotten about that. If you had, um, I don't want to speak for him, but you know, you talk to him, he would tell you he would put some people in Clyteville or in, in Bemis. Right now, if you had the staff available, that would certainly it help their ISO rating because you have people who are housed there who are on call there. And it affects their rate. Right now, the rate to be an ISO of some areas are nine because we don't either have a station close enough by, a hydrant close enough by, or paid staff, or you know, a staff person, I said paid, but just a staff person there at the station. So it would, the ISO rating, I think, is you know, very important. I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, and I, I talked to uh, the chairman about it and some of you all. Uh, you know, with me, it's about safety. At the end of the day, when, when, when you had a house on, on Lehman's burned down on a, on a holiday, um, basically, and it was, what, a block away from a volunteer fire station? You know, the, the citizens, you know, they, they, they got questions, and, and rightly so. Um, and, and, and not the... Uh, criticize, you know, our station for being the last uh, emergency service there, but they came away from 84. It was on Memorial Day, you know. But, so, but didn't they, did they not, were they still respond within they, like, what, they, six? They, they, well, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm getting Very quick at. response. So, you know, that's why I'm saying I'm not criticizing that. It's yeah. just, it's just the, the issue that we could possibly uh, reduce the damage, uh, and, and of course, save lives, you know, to me, <coughs> that's the heart of it. Well, it's I, I agree. Marshall, what does that look like? Does that... When I, are you talking about 100% of the fire stations fully staffed? You're no. About 50 to, so what? So what's Reach, the number? More, more than one. Okay. They, so so right, now, right now we have one fully staffed uh, fire station in the county. So, so what would be a good goal for staff to kind of look at to give us a recommendation on the fire station? Okay. And, 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 and Guyton would either put it on the west side or the north side. You know, in the, in the Stone Creek area, where we just have a metal building out there with nobody in it. On the north end of the county. Well, or in the uh, south end, where we do have a building like Clyteville, but he said that's the that's really a need. 
in that area. But I think that's what the staff is looking for. They're looking for more specific sort of goals to, to look at. Yeah. You know, I don't think we need to say, oh, we will go put five fire stations out here full time. Yeah, let's, let's be realistic. Let's try to at least have something attainable uh, within a three to five year period or however many long uh, you want to place it at, at least. If you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. Let's have it some target to say what we want. And to me, just let's just try to get one more fire station out there staff. Again, you don't have to build the buildings. It's, it's, uh, we've got buildings like in uh, Bemis and um, Mr. Chairman, I had, and I had three things really quickly, quickly and there are okay. two that are related. Number one is um, I would like for there to be um, a greater level of accountability and dialogue between the hospital authority and the county commission. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for um, more specific and more purposeful dialogue between the hospital authority and the county commission regarding the state of the hospital, the future plans of the hospital, um, how um, the hospital is navigating the challenges related to the sort of the new paradigm that exists with healthcare. Um, and I would like similar dialogue with the other authorities. So, yeah, so rather than us going to them and digging information out, I want there to be very specific very timely and regularly scheduled public dialogue between the commission and all of the authorities. That's, that's, a, that's a good goal. Okay, that's so, that's, good so goal. those are two things really than one. And the third, I mean, or second, I'm not sure how we would measure, so maybe we need to talk. Maybe I need to think about it some more, but um, I think the trip that the, the county and the city took to Washington um, needs to be something that we are more purposeful about in the future as we begin to sort of hear more about more sequestration or BRAC or whatever, <coughs> I would like for the County Commission to to develop a um, a philosophy, develop a plan, develop a strategy for partnering with all the other players in Lowndes County to be one voice regarding uh, regarding our advocacy to continue Moody's mission or to make sure Moody is secure that sort of thing. So that's a little difficult to, to measure. That, that's a difficult thing to set timing on. But the, the bottom line is I think that's a big enough thing that we need to at least agree and see if we can together find a way to move forward and begin measuring those. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can agree with that. And, and, and I would add this, and, and I think that each one of you that has been involved in the community has probably uh, seen it. Um, when I, when I was elected and took office in January, that was one of my personal goals, was that there had to be better communication between um, the county and the municipalities. Uh, and by doing that, with that communication, you also end up with the opportunities to go and talk with these folks that affects our community, such as the folks at the Department of Defense, as a unified community rather than a divided community. Um, the message and the information is free flowing, and if it's flowing out of Moody to Washington uh, and it's negative, uh, we want to try to prevent that. The key is, is that everybody is on the same page about those issues. Um, we have made steps forward with that, and uh, I think that would, that's going to be a continuing trend that you would see, is that when we, we have <coughs> opportunities to um, to communicate, to communicate and cooperate with the municipalities in Lowndes County, we should take those. Those are not always issues that are uh, infrastructure issues driven that way. They are just uh, public relations for our community as a whole. And when that opportunity is there, we should be taking advantage of it. And I think you'll find as we move forward, we, we will continue to do that. Can I add one piece to that, Mr. Because I know that you are, you and probably uh, Larry and others and the mayor have communication with Moody and with others, but most of the time that communication that you all have is some information in that, that can be filtered back to us. I think it would be beneficial to us to be able to receive that information. Well, absolutely. Um, I try to share as much information as I, as I can. Um, there are some things that, uh, and, and I'll use uh, 
this information right now. We're working with Moody, all of the community, the entire community is with Moody on their, what they call on their P4 partnership, and that is to see what can be, what, how can the community work with Moody Air Force Base to enhance Moody Air Force Base, but as well, in turn, would enhance the community also. In other words, a shared cost savings. What can we do? Uh, there's some ideas out there floating, but a lot of times there's no need in, in putting that idea out there until uh, both parties have looked at it and, find, and, and decide that, yes, this is something that has some merit and this is something we can move forward to. And once that's kind of done, you can kind of begin to, to publicly, you might say, discuss those issues. Um, but I agree, and, and I, um, I'll get into that in just a, in a little bit, but I, uh, I, I agree with you 100% on that. There are some key individuals that the governments always communicate regarding where Moody stands. So I think that the way you could make this me measurable is if you, know, you take what's been recently gathered by the chairman's communication with them, and then if you all establish whether or not that's something that you want to check back with quarterly, or whether you want to check back every six months, then you've got a, a schedule of communication um, where every time you talk, you speak with them, we're, we're better or we're worse than, than we were, but I think you manage that. It's a little difficult, but I do think that you can set some parameters that can be that measurable. If you just establish how often you'd like to give that information. Well, Mr. Chairman, what would you recommend? Would you rec I think <coughs> every quarter would be a lot, don't you think? Yes. Okay. You, um, you also have to be aware that uh, the military personnel changes every two years. So sometimes the focus changes with that change in command. And the dialogue between the civilian staff and you and your, your staff is important to maintain that throughout uh, on, an annual, uh, on a daily basis. Um, but I do think that you, you do need to have that periodic time established again so your goal is that. I think twice a year would be the plan. And there's going to be other communications, but we're purposeful and um, we're deliberate. I'm a poor car. Twice a year, unless there's something you know, special comes up that we need to talk about. You know, we just talk development. Excuse me, keep getting rich. Some development can happen. But other than that, yeah, twice a year. Richard, Richard can I go back to your question about the authorities? Yes, sir. What timeline? Are you talking about quarterly there? Are you talking about uh, well, <coughs> quarterly, quarterly, you know. well I, I think a quarterly, I may need to think it through a little longer. I, I think that the, the frustration, what you're hearing is you're hearing some frustration from me because we don't seem to get any, but I also don't want to be unrealistic because there are a lot of those authorities. There's more than just a hospital in the industrial authority. There's a lot of authorities. So, I would not be opposed to once a month throughout the year an authority or once every other month a work session. Um, <coughs> authority coming and giving a report, either work session or whatever the chairman decides, but someone giving us a report on what their what their goals are, what they're working on, what their challenges are, just giving a um, and it's not about them coming to the principal's office. It's about them, you know, I want the community to see us as more as partners. Well, especially more of a we, partner with with these authorities. If we fund them, you know, we, we and it's we not just us. You know, the city of Austin funds as well. Yeah, the city of yeah. So um, I would say every other month would probably satisfy me because you don't want to make it burdensome. You want to make it natural, and you want to make sure it looks like it's it's free flowing and it's not something that's you know. And so, if I understand you right, then you would you would ask uh, for that particular board, for example, or commissioner or party to come and make a report, the chairman to come forward, uh, as well as staff that is supporting that board, and, yeah, and I would say, for example, the planning commission. Right, and I would say that annual to, to, to biannual yeah, I think it's reports. I, I mean, those authorities exist so that they can go do the work, right? Yeah. So right. we're not micromanaging, we're just getting a report, right. and we're, you know, if there's communication that needs to exist, um, outside of a public setting with some of these, between a commissioner or the chairman and some of these 
authority members, and obviously that can happen anytime, but I would just like a public <coughs> report and a dialogue. I, and I don't, what I don't want it to be is I don't want these authorities to feel like they're coming to the commission and they have to stand there and take whatever berating that we give. I want it to be an open dialogue. No, I, I don't think, I, I think the whole key is, is that we're the ones needing to be informed. We're, we're the ones that needs to be educated right. what this board is, what they're currently doing. I couldn't see it as a, as a, as a session or opportunity for the, for the county commission to, to bust with the board. I, I don't, I, we don't need to get into that. At that video, I think the key is is that we are educated, understanding what that board is trying to get accomplished, what their goals are, long range, short term, and what their needs are. You know, I mean, there, there's some of them that has needs, um, and let and to see if we, again, going back to us appointing members and being better informed. I think if we also understand what their needs are for them to do the better job for the community as well, then that gives us that input that we would need to do to make that decision. So could we measure that by saying that the commission would like to hear from 100% of the applicable boards and agencies annually? Yes, yes, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. And what you were suggesting if, every if, other if, month, if, 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 yeah. is what, to make sure I understand, what you're suggesting every other month, have an authority come, not all of them come every month. Said, yeah, you know, that way, it, it, it works out that they're, yeah. they're informing us every six months, you know. It's, it's a, I think what Mr. Ray is saying is that once a month we would have a board or a commission come forward to right. give us. Well, to me, it doesn't matter about the, I don't, I don't really care about whether it's every other or every month. The, the point is I would like for every board to give either an annual or a biannual. There are some of those authorities that only need to give annual, but I think it may be, prudent to have the hospital authority, the industrial authority, and 